السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah The beneficent, the most merciful I praise Allah the Almighty alone Is all worthy of worship And I send the best peace and blessings Upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad Peace be upon him And upon the rest of prophets and messengers of God In the last episode Somebody raised a question About the jinn and whether um, uh, Satan was one of the angels or not. Because in the previous two episodes, we got to speak in details about the angels. And that as Muslims, we must believe in their existence, in their presence, and uh, the names of some who have been mentioned by the names and their tasks. And in today, inshallah, we're going to extend the answer of the question about Satan, and whether he was one of the angels or not. To speak about the jinn, I looked up the dictionary to find the definition of the word jinn, the English dictionary, which is not necessarily have anything to do with the uh, Islam or religion. And I found that the definition of the term jinn in the English dictionary means a class of spirits lower than the angels, capable of appearing in human and animal forms and influencing humankind for either good or evil. And basically, this is exactly what Islam says about the jinn. But, uh, with further more clarification about their nature and uh, what they do in this life and so on. So, since the jinn is some sort or class of spirit that we cannot see, how did we get to know about them? That is the question. We got to know about them as well as the angels, as well as heaven and the fire of hell, they're all unseen to us. By believing in Allah the Almighty and in His Word, the most authentic word, the Quran, by trusting His Prophet, last Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we were informed both in the Quran and in the traditions of Prophet Muhammad about the jinn, their presence, and what do they do in this life, and whether they're harmful or not. And the believers amongst them and the disbelievers, whether they're divided into these two categories or not. Allah the Almighty says in one of the most beautiful chapters of the Quran, which is known as Ar Rahman, the most gracious, the beneficent. He says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كالفخار, That he has created an insan, the man. The human being, Adam, peace be upon him, from a sounding clay, like the clay of the pottery. وَخَلَقَ الْجَنَّ مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نَارٍ When he created the jinn, the creation came before the humans, by the way. He created the jinn from a smokeless flame of fire. And that was the main reason why Satan refused to greet Adam, whom Allah created by his own hands, and he breathed the soul into him. Then he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam in respect and greeting. Satan happened to be there and he refused. When God asked him, why didn't you join the angels? Because he was there, not because he's one of the angels. He said, I am better than him. I have been created from fire. While he created him from dirt, from clay, I'm superior to him. So that's why he refused. So God repeated the command. And when he refused, he was punished by being expelled from heaven. And this is when it all started. Satan declared his enmity and animosity to Adam and his offspring. Satan was the one who deceived Adam and Eve and convinced them to disobey Allah the Almighty and eat from the tree. What tree? We have been informed that in the Quran that when Adam and Eve lived in heaven to wander around freely to eat from its fruits and trees 
without any limit, without any restriction, except for one tree. The Quran didn't tell us what kind of tree is it, because it doesn't really matter. It is just a tree. Because the reason why there was a restriction against this tree, it's a matter of test. To test his compliance. And to test him with Satan. So Satan sneaked into heaven. And he convinced Adam that, you know, if you eat from this tree, you will never exit out of heaven. Because this tree is a tree of eternity. If you eat from its fruits, you're going to live eternally in heaven. And for the same reason Adam disobeyed Allah and ate from the tree, for the same reason he was expelled and he was not given eternity. Because the only eternal one is Allah the Almighty. This is the nature of the relationship between Adam and Satan. Satan who is created from fire made a vow before Allah. He asked Allah to give him a respite, to increase his lifespan so that he would not die until it is the end of time. Where he will manage to discipline his offspring and his followers and utilize them to mislead the children of Adam. So far, he's managing to do that. And when he said, I shall mislead them all, remember, it can be true. So he said, as the Quran recorded, إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Except some of your servants who will be chosen by you. I cannot go near them. Those are the true believers. We are in conflict with Satan and his offspring until the end of time, at least the end of our lifespan, and in general until the end of this lifetime, until the day of judgment. Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ مُبِينٌ وَأَنِ اعْبُدُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ In a blessed chapter which is known as Yaseen, Allah the Almighty said, Did I command you all the children of Adam not to worship Satan and instead worship me, that is a straight path? Some people think still worship is to be a Satan worshiper. To bow down and to worship by to dress like Satan's and act like Satan's and comply. No, worship has a broader meaning than that. Allah the Almighty in another verse said, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان Don't you follow the footsteps of Satan. Meaning do not comply with his whispers. Satan's maximum goal is to mislead you. Is to divert you from the straight path so that you will end up in hell, like him. Because eternity in hell is guaranteed for Satan and his offspring. Allah the Almighty said, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ This verse benefits us several facts. Fact number one, that the jinn have been created before humans, which is known to everybody. Second, that he has not created the jinn nor humans, but for only one job, which is to worship Allah the Almighty alone. Three, the jinn and humans as well have been given the free will. That's why some of the jinn go astray and they become satans. As well as humans, many or most of humans go astray. They do not believe in the oneness of God. They disobey him and they become satans, but of human nature. Allah the Almighty said that jinn is a lower class definitely than the angels. And humans are superior to the jinn before Allah the Almighty. And the believers of the humans are superior to every other creature. He had made the jinn subservient to one of his prophets. It was Prophet Sulaiman, whom Allah the Almighty made the jinn subservient to him. He used to understand their language. He had a full control over them. The Quran says, وَمِنَ الْجِنِّ مَنْ يَعْمَلُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ And among the jinn, some of those who have been working in the service of Prophet Sulaiman by the leave of Allah. Because Sulaiman was a human being, but he was chosen by God to be a prophet. 
ومن يزغ منهم عن أمرنا نذقه من عذاب السعير and if any of the jinn would disobey his command or our command we will make him taste the blazing fire he will punish him Allah the Almighty tells us also another very interesting thing that happened with the jinn a whole surah a whole chapter in the Quran was called the jinn and it says in its beginning after in the name of Allah the beneficent the most merciful قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا Say, O oh Muhammad, peace be upon him, that a group of the jinn have listened to the Quranic recitation of Prophet Muhammad. So after listening attentively, they remarked saying, Indeed, this is an amazing Quran. They recognized that this word is the word of Allah. In another chapter it says, we have heard the Quran that have been revealed after the book of Moses. And immediately the group of the jinn who have attended this recitation, they declared their compliance and their belief and they submitted themselves to the will of God and they became Muslims. وَلَنْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا So they believed and they accepted Islam. And that shows that the message of Prophet Muhammad is not only for humans, but for everything that exists, especially humans and the jinn as well. So they became Muslims. So it is very important to understand that not all jinnis are bad or evil, but the jinn consists of two parts. The jinn and Satan's. In order to know the difference between them, you have to join us after the short break. So please stay tuned. And after the short break, inshallah, we'll get to talk about who are Satan's and who are the jinn. If you're 18 or if you're 80, if you've been Muslim for 50 years or five minutes, this is a show for you. You know, when five times a day, I've, our foreheads touch the ground in prayer, we beg for what's most important in our lives. We want to be good people, better Muslims. We want to serve Allah Almighty with all our hearts. In this show, Let's Talk, every week we're going to talk about Islam and life, how to relate with other people and how to serve Allah. We'll have studio guests, we'll have a live studio audience, There'll be a, an email for you to write to, talk at huda.tv. So if you're looking for something different, looking for something that will make you think, maybe even touch your heart, this is the show for you. Subhanallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back. Jinn and Satan have the same origin. They all have been created from fire. Allah the Almighty said, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِي وَهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُوْ he stated in this verse that when Allah the Almighty commanded the angels to bow down to Adam in greeting and Satan happened to be there, they all complied but Satan did not. And God explained why Satan did not. Because he's unlike the angels. The angels, they do not disobey Allah in any command. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون while the jinn have been given this free will. So he disobeyed, and Allah the Almighty said, why? كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنْ He was indeed one of the jinn, but he was a rebellious one of the jinn. فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ Then he warned us against him. So the very rebellious of the jinn, whom there is not 
a chance that one day they will become rightly guided are known as Satan's. The jinn, some of them are believers and some of them are unbelievers. But the worst vision are Satan's. Remember when we say that Prophet Muhammad once was reciting the Quran and they heard his recitation and a group of them have become Muslims. This fact happened when he returned from the journey of At-Ta'if and he was not able to enter Mecca. So Allah sent a group of the jinn. They listened to the recitation and they said to their people, we have heard an amazing Quran. We accepted Islam. This man is a messenger of God, like Moses, like Jesus. We follow him. And they started carrying on the mission of delivering the message. So the jinn too, not only accepted Islam, but they started acting as missionaries. وَإِصْرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنَ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُهُ قَالُوا أَنْصِتُوا When they listen accidentally to the recitation of Prophet Muhammad, they said, Be quiet, be quiet, listen up. This is an amazing Qur'an that got to be the word of God. فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ And when Prophet Muhammad finished his recitation, immediately they went to their people in order to deliver the message. They said, إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا We have heard an amazing Qur'an. And they started spreading the message. In the same chapter, which is known as Al-Jinn, the Jinn were admitting, وَأَنَّا مِنَّ الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّ الْقَاسِطُونَ فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرَّوا رَشَدًا Some of us are Muslims, and some of us are not. So those who have accepted Islam are truly rightly guided. They said, also, there are amongst us the righteous and those who have been misguided. So they have some similarities between them and humans. But they differ from humans in the following facts. Fact number one, that they see us and we cannot see them. Unless, if they appear to us and obviously they have to disguise in different forms and shapes, maybe like humans. Normally like animals such as dogs and cats, especially a black dog and a black cat. A snake perhaps. So, the Quran says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ Satan and his offspring and his assistants, they can see us, but we cannot see them. Does it mean that they are more powerful than us? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, Satan is the weakest creation. Because he knows that he's at fault. And he's a big time criminal. But you can defeat him with one word. One word would burn him down. The word is when you seek refuge with Allah against Satan and his whispers. The Quran taught us in several places how to defeat him. The Quran taught us that the plots of Satan are very weak. إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفَ Verily, the plot of Satan is very, very weak. So how can we defeat Satan? Simply by saying, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ I seek refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Beware, every one of the humans have a companion. We said with regards to the angels, everyone has some guards to protect him from in front and from behind. And everyone has a companion of the angels. Not a companion that his friend, no. But somebody who's trying to mislead him, who whispers to him to do bad things. We'll get to speak about that in details, inshallah, later on. So he was asked, what about you, O Prophet of Allah? Do you too have an angel? Uh, have a companion or... Uh, uh, one of the jinn who's attached to you, he said, yes. But guess what? My companion of the jinn have been guided and have accepted Islam. Allah have guided him to Islam. What about us? We have to strive hard in order to protect ourselves against the whispers of Satan, in order to overcome the temptation of Satan, who's trying to make evil doing seem okay to us, 
by seeking the help of Allah in order to defeat Satan. For instance, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, when you enter your house, you should seek refuge with Allah and mention the name of Allah. Why? Because if you don't, Satan will bring his gang and will follow you and will say to his followers and his gang, we guaranteed lodging tonight here. And if you get to eat and you forget to mention the name of Allah, he and his companions will eat with you. That's why there will not be any blessings in the food. So we were commanded to mention the name of Allah before doing anything, entering the house, leaving the house, eating, drinking, and so forth. I guess there is still a lot to talk about jinn and satans, but I wouldn't leave this episode to go by without answer a few of your questions. So as a question? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. My name is Khalid. I am from Bosnia and I have one question. Uh, does jinn have power uh, over human kind and uh, can they affect us? Yes, they do, but it is not ultimate. It is not eternal. They are only powerful when a human being is negligent. Negligent of what? Negligent of the remembrance of Allah. As the Prophet said, if you don't say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when you enter your home, they will join you. If you don't say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah while eating or drinking, they will eat and drink with you. You cannot stop them. The only way to stop them is by mentioning the name of Allah, by seeking refuge with Allah. They can possess humans. And this issue by itself needs a full episode to speak about it. Perhaps if we get a chance next time, we got to speak about how the jinn would possess a human and how can we drive them out and the ghosts and all of that and declare the distinction between superstition and fake things and the reality. So, in brief, they may have power over humans only when humans are negligent of their duties towards God. When humans are very weak and they let Satan's ride over their shoulders and redirect them and misguide them. But by remembering Allah, by performing ablution and wudu, you are very powerful and a strong believer. Next. My name is Ismir. Uh, I'm from Bosnia. My question... Uh, so you know him? You both are from Bosnia? Yes. Okay. Uh, how, can, uh, how can we uh, protect ourselves uh, from evil jinn? Okay. Uh, there are a few verses in the Quran. That Allah the Almighty said, by reciting them, they will protect you against uh, the evil effect of jinn. Maybe some new Muslims or non-Arabic speakers do not know how to memorize them. You know, if you say, I seek refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan, that would suffice you. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, وَإِمَّا يَنزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ That's verse number 200 of a chapter which is known as Al-A'raf or the Purgatories. And whenever an evil whisper comes to you from Satan, then seek refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. Because verily Allah is all hearing, all knowing, and He is the only one who can protect you. Well, once again I have to promise to continue talking about the jinn, their nature and the best mean of protection again is them and also exorcism in the next episode insha'Allah until then I leave you in peace wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. Glory be to Allah, all praise to Allah. There is no God but Allah. Allah is great. All power and might belong to Allah. The Most High, the Great.